In this video, we're gonna talk about how to tap into your seduction energy, how to be alluring and captivating, but in a very subtle, classy way. This has nothing to do with being sexual or dressing a certain way and has everything to do with your energy and the way that you carry yourself. Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. Every woman has the power to tap into their inner seductress. And if you're disconnected from the side of yourself, then you're missing out because not only is it powerful, but it's also just fun. So I'm gonna share some simple, classy things we can do to enhance our seduction power. And this has nothing to do with, you know, wearing skimpy clothes. You can and should wear whatever you want, but skimpy clothes have absolutely nothing to do with seduction. It might get you temporary, low quality attention, but they don't give you that seduction power. Seduction is an energy and a way of being in your body. So I'm gonna break down the art of subtle seduction into three different categories. One, movement and body, two, speech, and three, our energy. And again, these things are all very subtle and of course classy, but in a few of my tips, I'll also share how to up the intensity if you want to. Oh, and also this is just meant to be a fun little spicy video. You don't need to take this too seriously. So with that, that said, let's get into it. So let's start with movement and body. So basically everything to do with how you carry yourself physically, how you move your body, and how you use your body and your body language to subtly seduce. So the first thing is to have that seductive power is that you have to slow everything down. Slow your body movements down and just relax. Like everything that you do, you can do it a little bit slower, but instead of thinking about it as just being slower, Think about it as accentuating everything you're doing. When you walk, you can walk just a little bit slower and accentuate your movements. If your hair is, you know, falling in your face, you don't have to quickly fling it back and, you know, anxiously fidget with your hair. You can slowly put it behind your ear. You can slowly push it behind your shoulder. You can accentuate it, right? You can do it slowly and comfortably. The goal is not to be slow just to be slow. The goal is to be more present and intentional with all of your movement, to accentuate everything you do, even with your hand movements. If you do the opposite, you know, quickly fidgeting, eating your food really fast, uh, walking really quickly across the room, flinging your hair back really quickly and, ah, uh, you know, messing with it, ah, uh, that gives anxious energy, right? That probably just made you anxious. It doesn't give seductive energy. Okay, so slow it down. You're not in a rush. You're enjoying the moment. You're being present in your body. This puts you in that seduction energy. And again, this has nothing to do with sexuality, but it gives you that seduction power. I also want you to think about how you hold yourself. Like when you're standing, are you all like tight and intense? Are you standing more like a military person? Are you guarded, always crossing your arms over your chest? Or are you relaxed? Are you soft? Do you allow maybe your hip to pop out a little to the side. You want to soften and relax your body, not hunch forward, but pull your shoulders up and back and then relax your body. The way you walk is also really important when it comes to that seduction energy. And again, a lot of these things have nothing to do with anyone else, right? It's just the way that you choose to carry yourself. And I feel like the way that you walk can instantly make you appear more attractive or seductive. When you walk, you want to make sure that you allow your hips to move back and forth a little bit. You want to feel kind of like you're floating. And again, like you're accentuating your movements. You're accentuating that you are a woman. Even if you feel like you have no curves, it doesn't matter. Just walking in a way where your hips move a little bit and your arms are softly floating on your side. This will give you more of that seductive look. And again, this can be done in a very classy, tasteful way. This is something that's subtle and you can kind of choose to accentuate this as much as you'd like. If you work on slowing down your walk, like I already talked about, and just accentuating your movements, then this kind of walk just kind of, it just kind of becomes easier and more natural. And what I like to think about is not necessarily forcing my hips to move back and forth, but more I just like to think about letting my body flow, letting it move, letting it glide. 
And that kind of creates the walk for me where it's a little bit more seductive, a little bit more feminine, but at the same time, it still feels natural. Next is eye contact. Eye contact is powerful and it can be very seductive and again, very subtle or not so subtle, depending on how you do it. Eye contact is so personal, right? It builds this unspoken connection. Like the eyes are the windows to the soul. So the way that you give that good seductive eye contact is by softly gazing into their eyes, right? I want you to look at my eyes right now. It's kind of weird because I'm staring at a camera, not a person, but I'll do my best. You're not trying to intensely stare at them, you know, like, uh-huh. You know, you're not trying to like intensely pierce into them. You want to softly gaze into their eyes, into their soul, right? You want to soften your eyes and just gaze into them. It's relaxed. And then you can look away and then look back or you can look down and look back. You don't have to keep that connection constantly, but this will make people feel seen and connected to you and can really draw people into you. And again, it's not like this intense eye contact. You wanna think about softly gazing into their soul, seeing who they really are. And if you wanna think about it practically, just allow like your eyebrows and your eyelids to relax a little bit instead of keeping them up, you know, and like keeping your eyes open, allow it, your muscles to relax up here. And this will kind of allow more of that like softer gaze. Now, if you wanna up the intensity with the eye contact, there's two things you can do. So the first thing is that when you break up that eye contact, you can look at them in the eyes and then look very briefly at their lips for a second and then look back up. And this can either be very subtle if you do it more like quickly and nonchalantly, or if you linger, you know, it can be less subtle. And then another thing that you can do when you're having that eye contact is to just tilt your head a little bit down, just a tiny bit, and give them that eye contact this way because it kind of creates more of that siren eyes, those siren eyes naturally, just because of the way that you're looking, right? So that's just the difference between here and here. A little bit of a difference, but a little bit of a way to up the intensity. Now, the last thing when it comes to your body and your movements is that you can also add in just some subtle light touch to your conversation. So you can just for like a second touch his arm, not in like a sexual way or anything like that, but just like a soft light touch for a second and then pull back. And you would normally do this when you're accentuating something in a conversation, right? Like, oh, you love that band too? And of course you have to use your discernment here, right? About what is appropriate. Like if you're meeting someone for the first time, then a few light touches on the arm is probably fine, but more than that might feel like a little bit too much, might feel a little bit pushy, right? Or as with my husband or with someone who you've been dating for a while, like your boyfriend, you can touch them briefly on the chest with some eye contact and then pull back. Again, this doesn't have to be sexual. This can just be light touch and some eye contact and it can be incredibly powerful. Touch can be very powerful. But the important part I think is touching and then pulling back, right? Because this leaves him wanting more. This creates the energy of you pulling him in as opposed to you chasing him or you pushing yourself onto him. That's a really important part of this seductress energy. And I'll talk about that more in the energy part of this video. Now, another important way to get into your seductive energy is with your speech. So again, think about slow and relaxed, right? Slow down your speech. When you're talking really fast and you just keep talking and talking, like that does not give off seductive energy. That's anxious energy. Don't be afraid to take up room with your voice and don't be afraid to let your voice, the words that you're saying to come out slowly and intentionally and allow your voice to be in more of that relaxed state. Like oftentimes we kind of have two different voices. We have our happy voice, you know, our more elevated voice, like a little bit more happy and chipper and more excited. And then we also have our calmer voice, our more relaxed voice, more present and more in our body a little bit more commanding, right? So you wanna allow yourself to soften into that more relaxed voice. And a little tip for this is to actually think about relaxing the muscles in your throat, because that can help you have more of that relaxing, soft, but commanding voice. And you'll notice when you're more excited or more anxious, you'll often get a little bit more tense in your throat, right? So you want to allow your throat to soften and that'll create more of that seductive type of speech. We can also have more of that seductive speech when we speak in a more calm, confident way. So a lot of times when people speak, they will have kind of different 
voice intonations, right? And a lot of times people will do this, especially when they're a little bit more anxious. And a lot of women do this, is that when they talk, they'll end their sentences on a question mark. It's like when their voice rises at the end of a sentence, even though it doesn't even really make sense. This kind of speaking tends to communicate more anxiousness, insecurity, nervousness, that sort of thing. Whereas when you do the opposite, when you end your sentences like this, when it's clear and confident. You come across as more secure in who you are and what you're saying. You come across as more comfortable and more confident in what you're saying. And to have that seduction power, you have to channel that comfortable, confident energy. Now there's also something powerful about not overdoing your words and saying too much because this adds a little bit of mystery to you. Again, the important thing to know when it comes to seduction energy is that you are not chasing, you are drawing them in. It makes people intrigued. It's hard to draw people in when you're touching them constantly and talking constantly because it's like you're giving so much. That little air of mystery can be powerful. And I'm not saying to not speak or to not speak up when you need to or to not use your words. I'm just saying that sometimes over communicating can sort of minimize that seductive power. Whereas just saying what you need to, but not that much more, that kind of can add to that seduction power, right? Like word vomiting all over someone that can kind of kill that mystery and that seductive vibe. Another little seductive trick that you can do when you're talking, if you want to up the intensity a little bit, because this will, is if you are, let's say in a louder area, okay, let's set the scene, right? Let's say that you are at a restaurant, you're on a dinner date, and it's one of those like crowded louder restaurants and you guys are sitting next to each other in the booth, right? Instead of looking at him and talking into his face, you can kind of lean in and talk into his ear, right? Instead of trying to yell at him so he can hear you, lean in and speak to him. And this can be sometimes a little bit sexy and seductive, but I like this one because it's super, super subtle because it's done for a valid reason so that he can hear you. And lastly, let's talk about your energy because remember, it's your energy that truly creates that seduction power. First, you have to have that confidence and security in yourself, right? Think about some of those very popular siren-like figures, right? I always think of Marilyn Monroe and I always think of Angelina Jolie. They're very much in their seductive power, but they're also very different. They look different and they kind of have different energy, but the same energy. They both channel some of that body language and speech type of stuff that I talked about, but they also do it in their own way. Like they're both very present in their body, very intentional with their movements and what they say, but they also kind of give off this energy of like, I am who I am and I put myself first. Not in an entitled, obnoxious way though, right? More in like a way of like, this is who I am. If I attract you in, cool. If not, I probably won't even notice. It's that confidence and that slightly unbothered, detached energy that makes them so intriguing. Now, the next thing is something that a lot of people miss because we think of this seductress, the siren, as kind of more serious. But a true siren also has a little bit of that mischievous energy. It doesn't have to be all serious. And I think that's part of what makes a siren so captivating is that yes, she's present, she's relaxed in her body, she's calm, she's confident, but at the same time, she's a little bit mischievous. She has this playfulness to her and this combination of traits makes her magnetic. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be reckless or actually do mischievous things. It's just the energy. Being playful, seeing the fun in things, not taking things too seriously, giving a little cheeky smile sometimes. Adding just a little bit of playful, mischievous energy can really up that seduction, especially when it's combined with all the things that I've talked about. And lastly, this is the most important thing you do not chase, you attract. A seductress never chases, she attracts. She pulls people in energetically to her. The masculine is what pushes forward to what they want, but the feminine pulls it in. They receive that. Think about it as pushing versus pulling. You wanna be pulling. A woman who is more in her seduction siren type of energy, she's not chasing, she's not pushing herself onto someone, she is pulling them in with her seduction power. You wanna lead with that energy of come and get me, right? It has that little bit of playfulness energy, but it's also a little bit of that confident, unbothered energy. Like you can come and get me, but I won't be affected if you don't. You wanna think about staying in this attracting in energy. And that's why it's so important to make invitations and not demands. You are inviting him in with your energy, 
but you're not demanding it. You're comfortable not receiving it. Everything needs to be their choice. You are not forcing him to do anything. You're attracting them in, you're giving them the option and they can take it or they might not, but either way, you are always staying in that attracting in energy. You can also think about it as like sometimes leave him wanting more, right? Like with the touch on the arm and then pulling back with the eye contact, then looking away and pulling back. Like you are drawing him into you. You are creating that desire in him to want more. And from the way that you talk, from the way that you walk and move your body, the way that you accentuate yourself, that's drawing him into you. He's drawn in because he wants more of you and more of your energy. If you had a great first date, you tell him how wonderful of a time you had, and then you go home. You leave him wanting more. A woman who embodies more of that siren energy, she's not playing hard to get. She's not trying to be manipulative. And this is so important because those games and that manipulation, all that does is attract someone who also plays games and who also tries to manipulate their partner. And that's not what you want. She's not trying to control the situation or the outcome. She's not trying to force things. She's just living her best life, confident in who she is, having a good time. So she attracts in because of the energy that she has and just the way that she carries herself. And she lets him come to her. It's not manipulation, it's not games. It's leaving that space for him to come to her. If you're interested in learning more about this type of energy, I highly recommend you check out this video, how to enter your dark feminine era and level up your life. I hope to see you over there. But besides that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got value from this video. I hope you thought it was fun. Um, and if you did stay until the very end, leave your favorite red emoji below so I know. So I'll see you over there or I'll just catch you next time. Bye.